Bill Hemmer, chief anchor for Fox News and anchor of Bill Hemmer Reports. Thanks so much for joining us on this uh, vice presidential debate day. Uh, Bob, good to be with you and good to be in your town. Well, we're glad you're here. Tonight is really a big deal, but we have never seen anything like this. Uh, and, and just as an example, the debate stage itself with the plexiglass divider down the middle and the uh, debaters 12, 13 feet apart. Uh, how is that going to play in this debate tonight? And will we at any point yeah. actually get to hear anything about the issues? Yeah, I, uh, it's my hope that it will be all about the issues and all about the records of each campaign as well. Uh, they are long, as you well know, Bob, whether it's uh, the vice president has been the public eye for a long time or Kamala Harris her times in the Senate uh, or Winter uh, as her time with the attorney general there in California. Uh, the, the Plexa class is, is, is very fascinating to me. I was looking at images just a short time ago. I don't know how this plays at home. I don't know how the director shoots it. I don't know what sort of angle they take. I, I don't know how viewers interpret, you know, the physical barrier, even though it is clear, five feet, six inches tall, four inches wide. Um, will it play a factor or does it disappear into the studio itself? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Susan Page, the moderator, I, I, I would anticipate, will explain a little bit of it. Um, but all out of safety and precautions. And I would bet, Bob, that Kamala Harris makes COVID a big deal in tonight's debate. And I would expect Mike Pence to be ready to defend it. We'll see how it goes. Now, speaking of COVID-19, I mean, it, it's clear we've got a 77-year-old president who, I'm sorry, let me do this again. It is clear, Bill, that we've got two older men running at the top of each ticket. A 74-year-old current president who's fighting COVID-19 himself right now and a 77-year-old Democratic challenger. I mean, whoever is going to take office as the president next January the vice president is going to be one heartbeat away from that presidency. How important is tonight's yeah. debate looking at it from that standpoint? Yeah, I, I think we always hear about that heartbeat away every every four years. And, and you're right about that. But I, I think the level of interest raises up um, uh, even more so now. 74 and 77, as you mentioned, if Joe Biden wins, he'll turn 78 third week of November. Kamala Harris is 55, Mike Pence is 61. But if you think about the events of the past week that ha unfolded inside the West Wing, uh, it has taken on a certain urgency that perhaps many people did not anticipate. You know, President Trump has been very critical of, uh, of Joe Biden for a year now about his mental capacity and his mental acuity. Uh, and just today, Nancy Pelosi went after Donald Trump, suggesting that uh, the steroids were changing the way he thinks and suggested that uh, back during the State of the Union in Washington, D.C., that he was on something. Uh, this, is, uh, th this is hitting in a way that no one could yet anticipate, but it all unfolded when the president came out with his positive test along with the first lady. And uh, we'll see how it goes. My guess is the interest level has been cranked up in a way we haven't seen. Uh, just for comparison's sake, Bob, four years ago, you had 37 million people watched Mike Pence against Tim Kaine. I bet you don't even remember that night. I don't remember much of it. In 2008, Sarah Palin had 70 million Americans tune in to see what she was all about. I'm not suggesting you get to 70 million, but I do believe the interest levels certainly are higher than they were four years ago. Last week, your colleague uh, Chris Wallace from Fox News uh, let uh, both debaters know what questions or what topics he'd be covering in the debate. He did that about a week ahead of time, and everybody knew. Susan Page hasn't done that. How do you prepare for a debate in which you don't know what the topics are going to be? My guess is if either candidate wants to uh, win this campaign, they have to be ready for everything. And that's a big part of the reason why uh, we watch. You're right, Susan Page has chosen not to reveal those topics. That's her decision. Chris Wallace made a different decision at least a week before Cleveland got underway. Um, my awesome... My impression also is that, given the events of the last week, that she has probably uh, been forced to alter the way she approaches COVID, especially tonight. And we'll see how they answer it. Just about every poll out there has uh, Joe Biden leading President Trump at this point. And with four weeks to go before the election, just a little less than four weeks, 
Is there anything that the, the, either one of these vice presidential candidates can do tonight in the debate to change that? Yeah. Well, uh, Mike Pence can defend the president, and Kamala Harris can make the case for Joe Biden, and that's why we're here in, in Salt Lake City. I look at a lot of the polling yeah, uh, along with you, and I'm not suggesting it's inaccurate, but uh, there, was, um, there was a snapshot from yesterday that took the exact same day four years ago in these key battleground states. Bob, it, it was Pennsylvania, it was Florida, it was North Carolina, it was Wisconsin, it was Michigan. It was all the usual suspects. And the margin of difference in the polling yesterday versus four years ago yesterday was 0.3% here or 0.7% there. And I looked at that and I, I know what the national polling is suggesting, but Hillary Clinton had the same margin in 2016. I think this is still razor tight. I think it can shift one way or another. Five million Americans have already voted. Um, my belief today, Bob, is that this is still anyone's campaign. There is a picture uh, imprinted in my mind of the president returning from Walter Reed Medical Center, standing up there on the White House balcony and taking his mask off and then walking into the White House into a room full of people. What kind of a message four weeks from the election does that send about the seriousness of COVID-19 and the role that it is actually playing in this campaign? I didn't see the video or pictures of who was inside the White House. And you're right, it did get a lot of attention. I would say that the president was also standing on the south portico of the White House by himself with no one within range of him. I, what I saw, Bob, from my perspective, is that he turned around and there was a videographer and there was a still photographer who were waiting for him to come back into the White House. And you're right, he re-entered the White House without a mask. Uh, someone suggests that's his defiance on COVID. I think what the president would argue is that I'm here, I had it. I'm going to get through it, and you can too. Vice President Mike Pence and Kamala Harris debating tonight in the vice presidential ticket. Who has the advantage going in tonight? Um, I think it's a jump ball. I, I think these two politicians uh, are well studied and well versed in the issues that they want to bring to the table tonight. I think it's a great matchup, actually. It, it, to borrow a phrase, I mean, this, these are two evenly matched teams, I believe, at the start of the contest. Uh, the one exception is this. Mike Pence has a lot of experience with this. He's been in public eye for a long time. Kamala Harris had a very good debating uh, point uh, last June of 2019 when she went after Joe Biden. A lot of people were taken back by that. I think Joe Biden would admit to the same thing, and now she's on the undercard uh, for his ticket for, for the White House. What happened after that bait was intriguing, however. She faded, and within five months, she folded her campaign. Uh, many will be watching to see how many, how many arrows she has in her political quiver and how she stands up over a 90-minute period of time. She's never been on the stage of this magnitude before. Uh, I will say, however, ever since she has been tagged by Joe Biden, she has met the moment uh, throughout the campaign. Her speech at the DNC under a virtual uh, a speech. Uh, she later came out several days later and made a stinging delivery in Washington, D.C. against the president, indictment against his uh, administration. So we'll see if she rises to the moment yet again tonight here in Utah. All right. Bill Hemmer, chief anchor for Fox News and anchor of Bill Hemmer Reports. Thanks so much for being with us today.